Hello, algebra students. So today we are learning about the percent of change. And the percent of change um, is on page 160 in your book. And it might be helpful to follow along. So if you can, just go ahead and pause the video and grab your book. Um, I'll be going back and forth between the book here and my notes over here. So um, if you need to go ahead and grab your book, go ahead and do that now. All right, so here's our um, notes for today, and your learning target <clears throat> is I can identify the percent of change between two quantities. So um, before we begin, just kind of picture yourself maybe at the mall or at Target, and you see that something is 60% off. Oops, not 605, 60% off. And you are very excited because this means that it's a really good sale. So in your head, you know that if you, something is normally $50 and it's on sale for 60% off, um, there's a few ways that I personally think about it. I picture it as, well, I know that it's more than 50% off, so I know that it's at least $25 or less because I know that it's more than 50% off. That's just kind of how I think about it. but. Um, you might have your own way of thinking about it. Or um, typically at a restaurant, if your bill was, let's say your bill was $40, and you typically tip 20% of that bill, um, I've, I usually break this 20% into 10%, and I do 10% of 40 is 4, so 20% of 40 must be 8. So I know that I'll be tipping $8 for that bill. So um, this is, these are just some examples of how you can use them or how we use percent of change all the time in our daily lives, but um, we don't really call it percent of change. So um, specifically, I guess these are just mostly examples of percentages, but when we add this word change in there, we're talking about um, an increase or a decrease. And this is the only part of this lesson that is a little bit tricky to um, kind of catch. So um, if you look on your book, it talks about the percent of increase and the percent of decrease. So um, here is the term that you would need to know. If the new number is greater than the original number, the percent of change is a percent of increase. So if the new number is greater than the original number, um, they are talking about word problems. So it's showing you, um, these ones actually aren't even giving you word problems. They're just saying here's the original number and here's the new number. So if this new number is higher than this original number, we've increased. We've gone up. So the percentage is going to be an increased percentage. Whereas this one is a percent decrease because the original is 30 and the new one is 12. So we've gone down. So here are the steps right here to find um, the percent of change and you can go ahead and write these on your notes. I'm going to stick mostly on this because I think it explains it well. So before we do anything, we have to find the amount of change. So we have to find how the difference between these numbers basically and difference typically means subtracting. So um, we know that the for the this remember that this column is the percent of increase and this one is the percent of decrease. So um, we know that the original number was 25 and the new number is 28. So the difference between those two numbers is 3. So we need to find the percent using that original number. We need, we're need we basically asking ourselves what percent of 25 is 3? And the way they do that is you write the difference of change over the original amount is equal to some number, if for some reason they're using R, which you don't have to use R, you can use whatever number you want, over 100. And let's go to our notes real fast. The reason, oh, and please fill in these two definitions. Um, the reason that they use over 100 is because percent literally breaks into two words, per and cent. Per means every and cent means is um, the root for hundred. 
So it means per hundred or for every hundred. So every time you see the word per cent, it means per every hundred. So if I have 88% of people um, like going to the mall, then 88 out of 100 people like going to the mall is basically what that is saying. So, and this is a division problem. I just don't have the ability to write it up and down. So, or it could be written as a fraction. All right, so looking back at the book, you write the difference, the change, the difference over the original, and you set it equal to, that's why I had you guys review those ratios, you set it equal to um, an unknown percent because this is the number over 100, this section right here is representing the new the percent that we're trying to find. And then we don't know what that percent is, so that's why there's a variable there, and it's over 100. And now once you have it in this form, you know how to solve that. We've been solving those already. So um, you cross multiply, 3 times 100, which is what they did right here. 3 times 100 equals 25 times R, because they cross multiplied to these two. So 300 equals 25R, divide both sides by 25, and R equals 12. So that's saying that 12 over 100 is the, the percent of increase. Um, so 12 over 100 is the same thing as 12%. So they're saying the percent of increase is 12%. Okay, and the same exact thing happens um, when you're doing decrease, only you just have to remember that you're doing decrease. So let's look at this one. The original price was 30 and the new price is 12. So we're gone down, so it's a decreasing problem. So 30 take away 12 is 18. We have to first find that amount of change. That step never changes. We're always going to need to find the amount of change and put it over the original amount. So 18 over 30 equals some number over 100 because we don't know what percent it changed. We're trying to find that out. So then you cross multiply 18 over 100 and or 18 times 100 and 30 times R. And it's very common for these problems to get large numbers like this one you're working with 1800 or 1800. Um, and that's very common for these kinds of problems. So don't think you did something wrong if you're getting large numbers. So 1800 equals 30 R. 1800 over 30 uh, reduces to 60 equals R. So this again, this 60 would be up here, and 60 over 100 is the same thing as 60%. So the percent of decrease is 60%. So in most of these problems, you will um, be given the this information in the form of a word problem. So let's go there now, and let's find one. Okay. So here's one. Example four. A sweater is on sale for 35% off the original price. The original price is 38. What is the discounted price? And look at these beautiful words right here. You are allowed to use a calculator on this, these types of problems. Um, I believe you have all passed the calculator test anyways, so that's awesome. Um, but even if you haven't, you can still use the calculator um, to solve these kinds of problems. So it, you're asking they're basically asking you to find 35% of the original price. Sorry, that was my phone that just went off. Um, let me show you in the notes over here. So they're asking you to find 35% of the original price, which was the $38. Okay, and basically this is what you would see when we were talking earlier if you were at Target and you saw something was 35% off and the original price was $38 this is how you should think about it or should solve it in your head um, or if you happen to carry around scratch paper with you maybe you could just whip out your math skills and solve some math inside of Target but if not this is um, you can just use these kinds of problems when we're doing homework so 35% of 38, well of means what? means multiply. So 35% and I'm going to use this symbol for multiply of 38 equals. Okay, well this is a problem. We can't just do 35 times 38. We need to somehow do this percentage into either a fraction or a decimal. So um, if you did a fraction, it would be 35, oops, 35 over 100, like that. Um, if you did a decimal, it would be 0.35.
and 0.35 is what I prefer to use. I've always preferred the decimals in these ones, but you will get it correct if you do the fraction form too. So 0.35 times 38, when you use a calculator, I'm going to grab mine right now, you will get, or we can peek back in the book because they did it, 13.30. So this is where you have to remember, this is the tricky part. So we got the answer of 13.30. Now, what is this answer telling us? Is this our answer? Or is this just a step in, the, in solving the problem? If you said that this was just a step in solving the problem, you're correct. Because the original problem says, a sweater is on sale for 35% off the original price. We just found that $13.30 is 35% of 38. This is not the final price that you will pay if you're buying that sweater. In order to find that price, you have to do 38.00 minus, I should make this some more space, minus 13.30. Because this is the price of the original sweater, and this is the sale price that's being taken off of it. So then we have to find the difference of those two prices before we can get our final answer. And if you're following along in the book, it shows you that right here. 38 minus 13.30 is 24.70. So the new discounted price, the decrease in percent, is 24.70. So that would be our final answer over here, 24.70. And a lot of these um, will have some sort of label with them, so please don't forget your dollar signs when you're writing your answers out. Okay, um, I think that is as complicated as it gets other than if you are adding things or adding a certain amount of percent to a total and we do this all the time when we add tax and that's why this example three is sales tax. So if you are adding sales tax to a product you do the same exact thing that we just did. Um, if you look at this problem right here so a concert ticket costs $45, the sales tax is 6.25%. So what is the total price of the ticket? And remember back in your um, old math skills, you should remember that total equal or is um, signifies addition. So if you have 6.25% um, of, of again means multiply, of 45. Now remember, you can use the fraction form of 6.25% or you can use the decimal. If you're using the decimal, when you have a percent, you always move the decimal over two spaces to the left. So you have, you have to move it over here in front of the 6 and then one more time. So you'd have to add a 0 here, which is what they did right here. They had the, It was originally um, between the 6 and the 2 and they moved it over two spaces and now have 0.0625. And they're multiplying that by 45 because it's 6.25% of 45. So you again use those magic words and use a calculator and you will get 2.8125. And then you have to add that to the original price because this is sales tax that's being added on to the original price of the ticket. Um, and then if you ever get something that is four decimals long or five decimals long, we don't go out that far when we're using cash, so we just round to the hundreds place. So um, this one was rounded to two point eighty or two dollars and eighty one cents, and then that amount was added to forty five dollars, and then you get the forty seven eighty one as your final price. So go ahead if you need to look through these examples one more time. Please write down these examples, these two examples on your notes. Pause the video now if you need to. Um, and I really want you to write these words down. The change, the original amount, and then um, somehow in the way that works best for you, remind yourself that this part of the equation on this side um, represents the percent because percent means something over 100 or per 100. Okay. There is not a quiz for this section because I want to do um, another activity with you in class, but we will be working through these problems in class, and then on Friday we are going to do um, a quick activity with research and, and things like that. So go ahead and um, 
uh, I guess just look over these and I'll leave the video here.